We have a big show for you tonight. Now there are several ways to solving quadratic equations. Up to this point we've shown you, hopefully you remember, the zero property. But to do the zero property we had to factor the expression. The rest of the ways we're going to show you don't require a factorable expression. For instance, the first, another way I want to show you is by rooting both sides. For instance, this is a quadratic equation because it has an x squared, isn't it? So it should have two answers. Now, another way to do this, other than using the zero property, this one you could have used the zero property, is Certainly. to take the square root because that undoes the square. Of course, if I do it on the left side, what do I have to do? I have to do it on the right side. Now the square root of 49 is 7. I'm supposed to get two answers. Remember, the square root of 49 isn't just 7. It's plus and minus 7. So you should always get two answers of some sort with a quadratic equation. Now this should still work even if the root doesn't come out even. Play it for her, play it for me. Play it. Let's do the same thing here. What would we do? We better get two answers of some sort because it is an x squared. Well, I want to get x by itself, so I want to undo that 2. And what undoes a squared Certainly. is the square root. That's the inverse. Of course, if we do it on one side, we have to do it on the other. Okay, well, we have to always simplify as well. Consider that the square root of 48 doesn't come out even, but it can be simplified into the perfect square, 16, and uh, the scum left over, if you would. The square root of 16 is 4, and now you have an answer. Well, you have two answers, actually, because any square root has a plus and a minus answer, and that's one way to solve these equations. Now, they do get a little bit more difficult, but they're all going to actually go back to the order of operations. It's important that you understand when we actually do a problem, we're going to follow the order of operations, which is parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction, and then simplify any fraction. Now that's when we do a problem. To undo a problem, which is what we're doing with an equation, we're actually going to follow the order of operations backwards, aren't we? Excuse me? We're undoing a problem with, with an equation. So you do need to know the order of operations backwards as well as frontwards. We're going to get rid of addition and subtractions, then undo multiplications, Ooh, yes. then the last thing, which we would have done first, normally if we were actually uh, computing an expression, the last thing we're going to get rid of is an exponent. So this square root thing is the last thing we're going to use when solving an equation. Let me give you an example. And recall, by the way, that what we're going to get rid of the square with is this new cleanup tool. I'm going to call it the rooter. Okay, remember that the rooter undoes a square. Okay, so we have to solve this. We have to get x by itself. I hope you appreciate we have to get rid of the 3. We have to get rid of the 2, the x squared 2, and the minus 5. And it's important which we get rid of first. It's also important to note that we should end up with two answers. Okay, now I'm going to assume we couldn't factor this. We couldn't use a zero property. So we're going to try the square root tool. I'm going to get rid of the 5 first. I'm using the order of operations backwards. Adding 5 to both sides, I get 3x squared equals 48. 
Now, I'm going to get rid of the 3 using the order of operations backwards. He's multiplying, so I'll divide. And I get x squared equals 16. Now, how do I get rid of the squared? The rooter. The rooter undoes a square. Do it on both sides. And of course, the rooter gives you two answers. Right? So the answers to this quadratic are plus and minus 4. Just another way to do it. How about this problem? Once again, you have to know your order of operations. Normally, to do a problem, we do what's in parentheses first, and then the exponent. We're going to work backwards, getting rid of the exponent first, then what's in parentheses. Whoa! Now, that too, once again, since we have a squared, and we're going to end up with an x squared if we multiply it, tells me That's the fact. I should have two answers at the end. And I'm going to root both sides. And let's see what we get here. On the left side, the root undoes the square. And quite simply, I get x plus 2, don't I? The root undoes the square. And on the right side, here's where you're going to screw up. I don't just get square root of 11, because any square root gives me... You've got to remember that. That's why I'm saying it 10 times. Now, and only now, we'll get rid of the plus 2 with a minus 2. And on the left side, he'll go away, and we'll have our x. And on the right side, we have unlike terms, if you would. So the answers are negative 2 plus the square root of 11, and negative 2 minus the square root of 11. That's two answers, isn't it? And that's pretty messy, isn't it? But that's another way to solve using the root property. OK, let's do a little bit more difficult. This one's done about the same, but it has a little bit of a twist at the end. We're going to start off as we did before, undoing that square with our new tool, the rooter. Of course, if we do it on the left, we have to do it on the right. And what are you worried about on the right? You see the square root of a negative number. Well, recall what we're going to do with that. Well, let me show you. On the left side, the rooter will undo the square, and we'll just get 3x minus 5. On the right side, Whenever you have the square root of a negative number, we're going to have i, aren't we? The square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is not only, by the way, 6i. We have to have two answers. I told you it's plus and minus 6i. Let's finish this baby off. Add a 5 to both sides. And on the left side, we'll have 3x. And we have unlike terms on the right. So we'll have 5 plus and minus 6i. We still have to get x alone. So we'll divide both sides by 3. And believe it or not, in this problem, x will equal 5 plus 6i over 3. And the second answer is 5 minus 6i over 3. That is two answers, isn't it? Get used to that plus and minus representing two answers. Why don't you go practice that?